Hey there, Facebook. Hope you're doing fantastically. Welcome to Coffee with Jared. Hope you're all doing fantastically today. As you're tuning in, what I want you guys to do is to share the stream. We're going to be giving shout outs today on the stream for everybody who shares the stream today. So that's what we are going to be doing. Make sure you share the stream. We're going to be giving shout outs. Number two, you guess anything that I'm talking about today. Five nights stay in Bali, five nights stay in ba uh, Thailand, up for grabs. Thailand, there's a cho choice of uh, Koh Samui, uh, Phuket, five nights stay, just grab your accommodation. Uh, just, that's accommodation cover, just grab your flights there. So that's what we're, we're talking today about the reason why people fail at social media, right? This is why they fail to profit from social media. That's what we're going to be talking about today, the reasons why people fail to profit. Uh, and I see this every single day. I'm having conversations with people. I'm having like, and and this is this is why they're failing, right? And I, I see it so clearly. And uh, when you speak to people about it, it's quite a painful thing, right? I spent my first thirteen grand on advertising. I didn't get a dime in return. Uh, so, and that was painful. And I want to show you guys how to profit from social media and the reasons why you're not profiting right now. Because it's not just like how it's just not it doesn't it's not the fact that hey it's not working for me uh, you know uh, it doesn't work for my type of business or my type of client isn't on social media right uh, you know uh, it doesn't I've tried it before it didn't work right. Uh, I've, I know all this social media thing and I've tried it, it doesn't work. For me. None of that, that's all excuses, right? That's excuses that you have led yourself to believe. There's five things that I'm going to talk to you guys about today to monitor to ensure that you guys profit from social media. Actually, not only ensure, but to guarantee that you profit from social media. So I'm telling you right now, you follow what I'm talking about today and you track this. Like you, you, you just freaking like laser focus in on this from so, for social media, right? You focus on it and you, you really like hone it in and focus on these metrics, these reasons today. And I tell you, you guys are going to start profiting from it. And we're talking like you're going to have a cash machine that's, you know, every dollar that goes in, it's going to give you three to four dollars back, right? And that, but it's got to come with focus, right? And I'm going to be talking about the metrics today that you must be tracking in order to do that. So what I want you guys to do, share the stream. More people need to hear this. Thank you, Mikhail. Thank you so much for sharing it, bro. You're amazing, man. For those of you that are tuning in, you guys must be following Mikhail too because uh, he is doing some cool stuff. Uh, so ensure that you're following him. He's involved in the social media game as well. And uh, he knows his stuff. So make sure that you're following Mikhail. So what we're talking about today, reasons why people don't profit or they fail to profit from social media is what we're talking about. Right. So let's look at it, right? Let's look at the big picture. Social media is this platform. We're talking like you know, several billion people, three, four billion people, or something like that on social media now. So there's a truckload of people on social media. And that's like, that's Facebook alone that doesn't include other channels and things like that. So when we're talking those types of numbers, everybody's ideal client is on social media. Well, what it's going to take now to be able to uh, hone in is, is how to make it work for you is to hone in a strategy to generate leads. But leads are very simple to get, okay? And I hear this word thrown around a lot good quality, better quality leads, good quality leads, uh, you know, people that want to buy from me, you know, hyper profitable buyers online, all this sort of stuff, okay? Now, that's all good and great to get that and to have that, right? However, it's not going to, like, you can have that, but it doesn't mean you're gonna profit from social media, okay? So what do, you, what do you mean by this, Jared? What do you mean? Like, what, what do you mean? Like, if I had people that, you know, just wanted to buy from me, uh, and, you know, I would profit from social media. Yeah, but, the, you know, the thing is, 
Like, who's going to just give you a, who, who are you just going to have a chat with, right? And they're just going to automatically give you money. If everybody, if, if everybody was doing this on, so, like, if, if social media just did this for you and your business, right? Where people would just ring you and give you money, right? Everybody would be doing it. And there'd be no money left to give. Because literally everybody who's advertising that's generating leads right now would be going, great, here's my money, here's my money. They're going to they're gonna run out of money pretty quick, right? And if then it's going to be, you know, who can lower the price the most, it'd be a race to the bottom to, to who can create the cheapest possible product. And as a result, what would happen is that, you know, we'd be, we'd be selling, you know, a million items on social media at like 10 bucks each, right? So to profit from social media isn't a better quality lead. It isn't a, it isn't a you know, uh, more qualified lead. It isn't someone who's, you know, so-called, uh, you know, uh, hyper profitable as a client. It isn't somebody who is, uh, you know, isn't like, you know, someone that's going to pay me what I'm worth and all this sort of stuff. It isn't all of that. Yes, it plays very small amounts, okay? There's very small little minuscule amounts of this that comes through. But really what it is that actually profits from it is understanding metrics, right? There's everything is a massive numbers game and it's a metric and it's about scaling those metrics, right? So I want to ask you guys all a question here that are on the live stream today. How many pictures of your product did you have yesterday? I want you to put it into the comments there. If you've had zero, put zero. That's okay. A lot of people on social media have zero. Okay. Uh, how many people did you speak to about your product yesterday? How many people were you in front of yesterday? How many people were your business in front of yesterday? Uh, how many touch points did you have with new people? How many people viewed your videos on Facebook? How many people uh, interacted on your posts? How many current clients did you speak to again yesterday and followed up? Social media is about understanding and to profit from social media. This is what a lot of people don't tell you, right? It's a hard game to do. It's very simple once you understand these five metrics, but it is, it's a tough game. And that's the cold truth of it. It's a tough game. You've got to have a lot of grit. You've got to have a lot of uh, know-how. Well, not exactly know-how. You've got to have a lot of work ethic. You gotta, you gotta have the work ethic. You gotta understand the metrics, and you've gotta understand that you'd have to work in order for it to work. So if you're the type of person at the moment that goes, "I haven't got the time," or you're the type of person at the moment that goes, "Oh my gosh, uh, I'm doing all this work. How am I going to be able to do this?" Right? That's a good quality question to ask, actually, rather than saying, "I haven't got" or "I can't." That's a heaps better question to ask. But then it's working through how to be able to scale these metrics. So I'm going to get stuck into it, right? So what specifically are these metrics, Jared? Right? Now, the big picture is you want to know, what is it going to cost me to acquire one client? Right? Now, who cares about the leads? Who cares about the leads? The leads are important, right? It's a part. It's an important part of the metric. But you want to understand, like the 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 highest level CEOs in the whole entire world, right? There's a reason why they get paid three hundred and fifty percent, uh, three hundred and twelve actually, sorry, three hundred and twelve percent more than the average employee, and uh, they read fifty two books per year, which is five five thousand two hundred percent or more. Uh, books than anybody else reads. There's a reason why. And what a lot of CEOs talk about, which all of you are a CEO of your own business, by the way, what they talk about is they talk about what is the cost 
The cost of acquisition for a client for our company is this. They don't talk how many leads they get a month. They don't talk about how many sales they get per month or anything like that, which it is an important figure, right? They do talk about that to a certain extent, but they focus on what is the cost per acquisition of a client? What does it physically cost me to acquire a client? And then how can I constantly look for ways to reduce the cost per acquisition? So if it costs me $300 to acquire one client, okay, then it's like, cool. Now I understand it's $300 to acquire one client. How can I take that from 300 to 290? What can I do for, to take that from 290 to 280? What can I do to take that from 280 to 200? And how can I reduce that cost per acquisition of a client, right? And there's a few ways to be able to do this. Now, so that was number one, is the cost per acquisition and how can you reduce it? Here's four other main metrics to track in order to do that. Number one is what's the volume of calls that have been done on a day-to-day -day basis with getting in contact with new potential clients, right? So you use social media as this tool to bring in these additional inquiries, right? Now, these, these inquiries, you gotta do something with them. It takes work to be able to convert, create trust, build authority, all this sort of stuff, it takes takes it, you know, you've got to do the work in order to make this happen. You've got to create an engine room around your business. So it's about how many calls are being made every single day to bring in new business, to have more conversations about your product. So that's, that's number two, right, is the amount of volume of calls being made. The more calls that can be made, by the way, the more other opportunities are going to be presented. It's a momentum thing. I was speaking to our sales team about it earlier today. I was like, the two challenges that you are going to be faced with is number one, not getting hold of people. Number two, uh, not getting callbacks when you leave messages, right? So it's a volume game. Like the more, like it's like a locomotive, right? When a locomotive is on its standstill, it's like tons of steel just sitting there. Tons of steel, and this is your business. Tons of steel sitting there doing nothing. And then you throw some coal, coal on the fire, the old school, you know, locomotive, you throw some coal on it, and you know, it heats up the engine, starts warming it up, you quick a couple of levers like this, couple of leathers, uh, levers, sorry, not leathers, I'm not wearing leathers, but a lever. You pull the lever, and then the lever starts taking this thing off. Right? It lets the brake off. For, for those of you that aren't making calls, you've got the brake on at the moment. You're trying to throw some you know, uh, coal on the fire, but you're just not getting anywhere. The coal on the fire makes the fire, but you've got to pull the leather in order to, the lever in, in order to take the thing off, right? So when the locomotive takes off, what it does is like three calls. Four calls, five calls, six, seven, eight, nine, a hundred, hundred and ten, hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty, right? Like the locomotive turns into another gear. When the locomotive gets up to speed, you put a car in front of it, it will decimate that car. You put a bus in front of it, it'll decimate that bus. It'll go straight through the friggin' thing, okay? So the calls, the volume is that, you know, no matter what gets put in front of it, it continues to be able to build the momentum towards getting the result, which is the cost per acquisition of a client, right? So that's like the first step, right? So the first step is knowing your cost per acquisition. Number two is doing the call volume, right? The two challenges you're going to have is getting hold of people and getting callbacks from message banks. We've got strategies around all of this. Number two is like tracking the calls to appointments made. So that's, that's so if it takes me, you know, I've got a database of a thousand and it takes me 
on average 60 calls to book one appointment, right? That's another metric, right? So then you want to understand like if I make 60 calls, I will get one appointment from a database. Bearing in mind, right? This is the best thing. If they're in a database, they've already had multiple touch points with you. They know who you are uh, unconsciously sometimes. Uh, but consciously, everything comes to their mind as you go through it, right? So it's about the calls to appointments ratio. And I tell you this now, the more appointments you have, the more results you will receive. If you don't have appointments in your calendar at the moment, how can you expect to make a sale? How can you expect to be able to profit from social media if you do not have appointments, right? Yes, it's okay to have an e-commerce product as part of your business, things that can sell online. I tell you this, if you've got an e-commerce uh, product, right, it is going to be big, big amounts of dollars that you would want to spend on your advertising in order to get results with that. Because what you're looking at is you're looking at getting the person to buy from you that has no idea who you are, by the way, no idea who you are, to buy a product based on a video that they saw, based on uh, some copywriting they saw, and based on this fancy landing page that they saw. Now, it's okay to have that. However, you must have this uh, down pat still in order to profit from social media. And if you've got small budgets at the moment, talking like, you know, a thousand bucks a month, small budgets, uh, $500 a month, $300 or $400 a month, you've got to switch up the strategy because if you're looking to do e-commerce, uh, you got to have a bigger budget, okay? So focusing in on like the cost per acquisition, number one. The second one, the amount of call volume, the amount of people you got on the phones, making sales, calls to, for, to new potential clients, that's number two. Number three is the appointments that are in your calendar, right? So it's the appointments that are in your calendar to be able to fill your sales pipeline. Appointments. Now, do appointments mean sales? Yes, to a certain extent. However, there's another metric before that. It's like, how many of those appointments have you pitched? Okay? Now, the amount of pitches that you do every single day will result with the amount of sales that you get at the end of each day, the end of each week, the end of each month, the end of each year. So you want to be focusing on the cost per acquisition. You want to be focusing on the amount of calls that you're making to the amount of appointments you're making to the amount of pitches you're having every single day down to, which is number five, the amount of sales you're making. And I'm going to add some more metrics to this. So the amount of sales that you're making, right, is the next step. How many sales are you making? And you can track all of it against these metrics, right? So the whole idea is the more calls you make to more opportunities, the more appointments you'll get, the more pitches you'll get, the more sales you'll get. It's a numbers process. In sales, you can stumble, you can trip, you can fail, and you can still get sales. The one thing is making sure that you've got the opportunity, okay? And without following all these other steps here, you're not going to get it to that stage. So if you're just getting like, you know, one sale a week, two sales a week, this is where you've got to focus in order to succeed. Knowing the numbers, what is your cost per acquisition of a client? Like what does it physically cost you in terms of dollar figure or time figure, whatever that is. Uh, then going through how many calls am I making every day? How many calls am I making every week? How many appointments are being made? How many pitches have been made each day? And as opposed to how many sales are made, the next step I'm going to give you for number six is what is the dollar figure that comes in? The cash in the bank as opposed to the sales amount. The, the figure you want to focus on then from every sales call is how much cash goes into the bank as opposed to the contract figure. So the contract figure, it might be a 90 day contract or a 12 month contracted figure, or it might be a, a you know, yeah, 12 grand or a 10 grand contracted figure. How much of that goes in the bank up front? Because what goes in the bank up front is what's gonna fund the business 
uh, moving forward. And you, when you're focusing on that, you want to focus on getting more upfront than you would uh, want to put over a payment plan period or a, you know, uh, anything like that. So like, like look at, take this for example, like builders, contractors, uh, people like this, they focus on, uh, they get the contract, they focus on maximizing the profits as much as they can over the material cost, then they charge 50% upfront, 50% on, on completion. Now, if I was a contractor, I would be focused on getting more than 50%. I would be wanting to get 75% or I would be wanting to get 100% to minimize the risk of me spending all this time doing this work for somebody and only then to chase it for the next 30 to 60 days after you've completed a 10 or a 20 grand job or whatever it works out to be for somebody. How much of a pain is that? Like if you would be frustrated chasing that money after you've spent all this time completing a job for someone, do you, if you would actually be frustrated by that, I want you to comment into the comments and let me know. Because I don't know, I get frustrated thinking about it. <laughs> and you know, we've, we, we had, uh, we've had multiple examples in the past where you know, out of the goodness of our heart, we help people, we do things and stuff like that. And then you find yourself chasing afterwards, right? And that's happened through multitudes of different businesses. And it's, it's not, not a fun exercise chasing money off people, right? However, from a business perspective, it's like, it's part of what we do, right? Like, we've got to have an accounting process and a, a monetary system on the back end to, you know, chase money owed, right? Money's owed. And having a smaller time frame of payment plans as much as possible to minimize risk for your business. So, and that was what we sp we spoke about minimizing risk. Uh, I think it was like early last week uh, as one of the I can't remember the exact training we did, but we're speaking about how minimal minimizing risk around you know security of the business and things like that. But it's also from payment side of things and everything too. Like the more you can minimize the risk. Uh, within payments, etc., the better it's going to be for your business as well. So, so in terms of all of this in the broad spectrum of uh, being able to profit and why people are failing at the moment, the, the reason why people are failing is they're not focusing on this. They're not focusing on these metrics that I've spoken about today because it's a science. Like social media is a science. High level CEOs all around the world, they focus on cost per acquisition. It's not a theory or a conspiracy theory or something that someone plucks out of the air. It's fact, right? And it's, it's a science around focusing on your cost per acquisition of a client and then looking to reduce that in any way, shape or form. And you can reduce a lot of that by having, you know, with products, right? So this is an extra, extra little bit of added value for you guys. Focusing on products that can reduce your cost per acquisition on the front end that don't cost as much as your normal products. So that's why like low barrier, low barrier to entry type sales are great for a business, like small little recurring memberships, that type of stuff. Over time, they build up and they, they just, they get a little bit back, right? They don't, they don't make a, a marketing campaign profitable in any way, shape or form, right? They just purely just cover a little bit of those costs back that you may not have got previously, okay? So these metrics is exactly what you wanna be focusing on to be able to grow, to be able to scale, to be able to take things to the next level when you're marketing your business on social media. And it's like, if I had, like, if you tell yourself the story of, I haven't got time to, you know, go through and do all of this myself, then it's like you ask yourself a better quality question on how can I do that? right? So, and especially if you're looking to really profit and take things to the next level and scale. And mind you, I just got off the phone conversation with a client earlier today, um, one of our War Room clients from last year for our up and coming War Room event that we're doing. Um, she did 7k in sales uh, last War Room on, a, on our three day event. And uh, we were talking around sort of how she has found things in this period as well, because like her business is 
what traditionally a lot of people would say is is going to you know uh, find it challenging in this time to grow, right? Because she's a photography business, and you know a lot of corporate businesses have closed down, and uh, you know a lot of other um, uh, you know brick and mortar businesses and beauty therapists and all this type of stuff are shut down. So there's no corporate shoots and video content that she can do for that. And then, you know, weddings can't be run because all venues are closed and people are canceling and all this type of stuff, right? So that's the normal story. However, she said she's had the busiest couple of weeks, like weeks that she's ever had in business, right? And her business is growing and flourishing as a result. Why? Because she focuses on these metrics. She understands that she needs to focus on these metrics in order to grow. The more people you get in front of, hence the more opportunity, right? It's like your network is your net worth that gets thrown around so much. And it's so true, but it's the quality of your network that produces a higher net worth, right? And the net worth is referrals. The net worth is uh, collaborations, right? That you can have with this type of stuff. And it doesn't matter whether somebody's in your niche, outside of your niche, uh, competitor, whatever it is, like it is still a, a network that you've got there that you can capitalize on out of a relationship, okay, to be able to grow your business, which is what it's all about. So focus on these metrics. Quick summary. Number one, what is your cost per acquisition? You want to understand that. If you're not marketing your business at the moment, right, I can give you metrics to run on for this. However, you've got to follow what it is that I talk about in the other steps. So I can give you a cost, cost or acquisition per acquisition to go by. Um, then secondly, the calls volume side. Uh, and, and by the way, the cost per acquisition, just let me know your industry and all that type of stuff so I can understand your business as well a little bit so that I can give you those figures, right? Um, so there's kind of a bit of a science, as I said, involved in it. So then it's like making sure that you've got the call volume there. Like that's calling databases, that's calling new leads, and that's following up new leads regularly. Text messages and emails and things like that as well, right, are involved in the process. You've got to work for it. Number two is how many, uh, from the calls that have been made, how many appointments are being made? From those appointments that are booked, how many actually show up and get pitched? So how many full pitches do you get out of those appointments that have been made? And then from the full pitches right, that you make, if you've made 10 pitches, for example, this week, how many of those pitches have turned into sales? right? And that brings me to the sixth one, which I gave you guys as an extra bonus. Uh, from those sales made, what's the sales volume? Right, so what's the contract value as opposed to the cash that goes into the bank for the business, and that's how you work out your return on investment uh, for your business. Right, so these are what you must go through in order to profit. Uh, thirty percent increase by you jumping on the phone with somebody. There's a thirty percent increase, absolute minimum, of extra sales you will make just by having conversations with people. So you have to pick up the phone. Unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, you've got to pick up the phone. Uh, unless, of course, you want to spend 10 grand a month on advertising, you can get the volume, you can profit from it and everything like that and go through the same process in terms of marketing strategy. However, still, you would want to pick up the phone because there's 30% extra you can pick up. And is, there's actually a number per call as well, right? So, Based on all of this, so this is another metric, right? And this is how you'll, you'll, you'll see all this super clear when you work it out. So it's like, based on every call that you make as a business, there is a dollar figure added to that, right? So for every call, it might be, you know, for every call I make, I make 10 cents. Or for every call that I make, I make 20 cents or 30 cents or a dollar. Whatever that is, okay? There's a figure behind that. So... Based on the amount of sales made every week and the amount of calls made per week to be able to get to that sales number, there is a payment that comes through for every call made. So if you make more calls, you get in front of more appointments, you get in front of more pitches, you get in front of more sales. You understand the numbers here that we're talking about, everyone? 
Like, if you're getting these numbers and you're understanding what it is that I'm talking about, comment into the comments right now and say to me, Jared, I understand. Or just type numbers, or just type word, or type value. Something into the comments, just so I know that you guys are getting what I'm saying. What I'm throwing down here for y'all, right? What I'm throwing down from you at 12 o'clock every day, <clears throat> right? And a, 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 that was a really poor rap, but you know, that's, that's why I didn't pursue a career in rapping, right? How many dudes you know roll like this? Like this, like this. <laughs> I'm gonna be taking uh, questions and so on that you guys have as well now. So hit me up in the comments or the DMs or whatever you wanna do, and let's get some questions answered. So I'm gonna pull this up on my comp, my computer that's working well today but it didn't want to do live Zoom calls again for me. That's okay, I've got backup plans. So what questions do you guys have? I'm gonna stop being a little bit funny now. I think it's about, I think I'll call this the 34 minute ISIS, uh, 30 more in it ISIS. Uh, that sounds like a, a, some sort of gang or something, doesn't it? So I probably won't call it that, ITIS. Uh, 34 minute ITIS. That, that makes a little bit more thing. You know I'm getting at the 3.30-itis type thing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, my live stream's turned into a funny one now. So, uh, I'm gonna be taking questions. So, what questions do you guys have about what I've just spoken about? And what can I do to answer those questions for you guys so I can help you move forward, right? Because that's what it's all about. It's about how can I help you guys move forward? How can I help you guys take more actions? How can I help you actually profit from social media more importantly how can you actually profit from social media because it's never as i said a fact of somebody saying it doesn't work for me and all this type of stuff right uh amy for example our broker who's coming in next friday for our interview you don't want to miss her by the way she's amazing um and some of the stuff we're going to be talking about around you know loans what's available how to present your business to a bank to have highest chances of approval, all this different type of stuff. We're gonna be speaking about heaps of other stuff, what's available right now, how you can get access to cheap money. Um, I think from memory there was something that she did say that was extremely low interest to no interest as well, that you can get access to at the moment, plus a heap of other stuff too that uh, we're talking about. So don't hold me to that last one, but I'm pretty sure she said to me something like that as well, because it piqued my interest for you guys as well. Um, different ways to increase your cash flow to help you guys with more longevity. There's heaps of stuff that we're gonna be speaking about next week. So uh, answer your questions right now. Remember as well, like these live streams, when you share them, I'm gonna be giving you guys shout outs. As I said, go follow Michael uh, Mikhail there because uh, he, he's an awesome guy in the social media game as well. Um, he'll definitely be able to help you guys take things to a whole new level too. So let's have a look. What questions have we got? Everyone's saying, hey, welcome Serena, welcome Mikhail, welcome. Uh, hope you're doing fantastically. Uh, big things coming soon, Mikhail. Man, man, I love it. <laughs> Tell me all about these big, big things that are coming. Um, hey, Veronic, hope you're doing amazing. Hey, Donna, hey, Nina, hope you guys are doing very well. Hey there, Beck, welcome to the call. Uh, who else have we got here? Uh, good morning, Copenhagen. Yes, good morning, Copenhagen. I love that we get people from all around the world now. This is cool. Uh, products did you have yesterday? Uh, how many people did you speak to yesterday? How many touch points do you have with new people yesterday? How many people interacted in your posts yesterday? How many people... Uh, you know, clients do you speak with yesterday and follow up? Yep, 100%, 100%. Because uh, they don't put what they do on profiles and people don't know what they do in Facebook. No, uh, look, pe people, like face Facebook is, like, like I said, right, generating leads on Facebook is really simple. Like it's super, super simple. And under, once you understand what we've spoken about today, it's gonna to be even more powerful for you too because what you'll, what, what, like when you can see how things systematically work, it's a game. When you know how things systematically work for your business, 
it is a game. That's all it is then. And the game is, I'm going to spend more. I'm going to get another person on board to be able to double the volume of calls made and then double the amount of appointments made, double the amount of time spent on the phone, double the amount of pitches, and naturally, systematically, it's going to turn out to this. And then, if I spend a little bit more, I'll be able to fill their calendars by, by this much just by doing this, right? It's a game. That's what it turns into. It is a massive, massive game, right? It's like jumping, logging into your Nintendo 64, right? Showing my age now, the Nintendo 64, and you're playing Mario Kart, right? And systematically, you know, when you're, you're a little bit behind and you shoot the red one, you know, the red one hones in on the person behind you, that's in front of you, sorry. Uh, and you understand systematically, right, if you hold a little banana behind you and they shoot a green thing at you, it hits the banana and doesn't throw you down, right, when you're in first place. Unless, of course, you get hit by the blue, blue little, uh, you know, shell thing, uh, then you're going to get hit, uh, which isn't cool, right? You understand systematically you can get around a racetrack a lot quicker by cutting the corner, right? So, you know, system like there's a systematic game to things. Like it's a game. That's what it is. It turns into a game when you get these metrics for your business. And then it's just a question of I spend more and you know what's going to happen when you spend more. Yes, there's other little devils and things like that to fix up as you scale things. Like, you know, uh, you get higher no-show rates. And then you got to like kind of systemize some things and pack them some things and some value in between and, you know, kind of systemize a little bit on the front end of how you have these conversations and then you fix that as you run, right? So this is all the stuff that I had to work out as we scale and as we grow. And this is the stuff that I want to share with you guys too because I know that that's what's going to help you guys move forward faster, which is what it's all about. Uh... What other questions do we have? My account has something wrong with it. If you get a message from me, please let me know. Thank you, I'm working on it to get fixed. Ah, uh, okay, radio. Uh, so don't message. <laughs> Got it. Uh, yep, thanks. We weren't friended, so maybe not, but just added you, so except. Okay, cool, fantastic. What else? Are the, what other questions have we got, guys? Jared, I get it, man. By the way, you should have that T-shirt cleaned and burned. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you actually read my message. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was reading this book. I'm going to give you guys a story on this. I was reading this book. It's called Trillion Dollar Coach by Alan Eagle, uh, Jonathan Rosenberg, and Eric Schmidt, right? And in this book, it talks about Bill Gates in here. Oh, no, sorry, not Bill Gates. Bill Gates? Uh, I forget who it was. Anyway, um, it talks about this guy. I, I'm a skim reader, right? So I skim read and I get the little bits that are super valuable and then I come back and I revisit it. So I don't own a lot of books, but the books that I do have, I get, a, I get lots of value from. So I skim through and I find little nuggets of gold each time and then I'll implement and, and do things, right? So there was like, uh, it was like, there's 10 reasons why this person likes you, whoever it was. I can't remember who it was. Uh, it's all on my phone. And uh, it's 10 reasons why this person doesn't like, uh, likes you. And one of it was, if they say, you must get that shirt cleaned and burned. Get that shirt cleaned and burned. Another one was, uh, oh man, there was some shot. There was some funny ones, uh, like stuff that you just like. Most people just would not even say to another person. So uh, it was. Uh, here we go. Yeah, it is Bill. Bill's Bill Gates. So it goes. Uh, you shouldn't have that shirt. You should have that shirt cleaned and burned, right? So that's what he just say. The next one is you're a you're as dumb as a post. So if this person liked you, this is the way he speaks to you. He's one of the great horses' asses of our time. <laughs> you're you're a numbnuts, right? These are the things they'd say if they liked you, right? You couldn't run that five flat flurry yard 
dash off a cliff. <laughs> what a, who speaks to someone like this? This is obviously leadership as at its best, right? So I just wanted to share that with you guys so you know what he's talking about. Wow. Uh, next one. So, yes, it's a joke, all right, mum, it's a joke. That's the joke. It was in a book. I screenshot it, sent it to Serena, and she decided to say what my shirt needs to be, okay? Uh, I think everyone should come to the war room. Yeah, 100%. Everyone should come to the war room. If you're watching this stream now and you want some info on the war room, just comment below. We'll get it across to you. Um, Three-day event. First day, we get all your marketing and stuff implemented and up and running. Day two, we get all your sales systems, processes, everything done. Your scripts, closing strategies, a lot on day two. Uh, day three, we jump on the phones, we start making sales. The lady I was speaking to you guys about earlier on the on the uh, live stream that understands a lot of these metrics and you know is the traditional business owner that would have been affected by COVID and all this sort of stuff has actually considerably grown in this time. Okay, considerably grown. Uh, why? Because people are getting like 10 grand out of their super here in Australia. People are getting paid 1500 bucks a fortnight to sit on their ass. They're spending money. Hello? Get involved. Uh, knowing their name, seeing and being able to convey what you can help them with. Uh, won't that help you get, keep, get and keep them hook slash engaged? 100%, you can keep them engaged, definitely by doing that. Uh, Trillion Dollar Coach, the leadership playbook to Silicon Valley, Bill Campbell, hardcover. That's the one, yep, that's the book. Right there, Trillion Dollar Coach. Good book. Uh, so do they understand that they do it from time to time uh, in the war room? So no excuses, it's get planned, activated, implemented and sold. Oh my God, where else is this happening? Like exactly right. Like where like this this event is there's there's nothing else like it, right? Because like a lot of people have a tendency. We we have we have a tendency, right, to overcomplicate things in our head, and we have a tendency as human beings to overthink things. We have a tendency then to completely just lose track of our time as a result. Uh, and then just have a lot of wasted time. And like, you know, sometimes what it can take for some, like if people are left to their own divide sometimes I find, uh, time goes by, nothing gets done because we get busy, so-called busy. Uh, which busy is just like, it's a term for, you know, I didn't do a lot, I just was busy. Um, so what it takes is that we give time frames to everything within this event. So. It's like on day one, we've got a very short period of time to identify who it is that we want to target. And then we've got a very short period of time to put our landing pages together, our copywriting together, and, uh, and, and our offer together, right? Very short period of time. Then we have some lunch. Then we've got a very short period of time to do our video content. We've got a very short period of time to do all of our ads, copywriting. Then we've got a really short time to put the ads up and running and a very short period of time to put the automations in place for email. Then that's like the first day done, which is everything all completed and your whole ad campaign's running. And day two is like, very short period of time to put your sales process together, your scripts and all that type of stuff. Very short period of time to put your systems, your sales systems and processes in place. And a very, very short period of time to go through your closing strategies and other automation systems as well into your business, like all of it plugged in and running live, right? We're not talking overarching strategy, you go away and do it. We're talking, okay, this is the strategy, this is the system, put it in place. We write all the copy, we get everything up and running. Day three is like, we don't just talk about sales, right? Talk about how to make more sales. We physically jump on the phone, we speak to live people and we make sales. So that's like every, all the metrics that we're going through today, it's like we're implementing it and we're doing it. There's only one way to learn, do it. Not going to an event and learning 18 different ways to be able to grow your sales, that's talking about it. That's information. 
that is good information to have. However, information without action is worth nothing. So it's like we get on the phone, we make sales. Like we make them. We actually do them. We have conversations with real people. We go through the closing strategies and the sales process that we mapped out for you on day two. So you know what to say, you know how to say it. And then you get to the closing process and you know Jared's just there, happened to be there with you, alongside you. And it's like your, your client says something and then Jared tells you to say this and you say that and then the client says something else. Jared hears it with you. He whispers in your ear, tells you to say this and boom, someone gives you some moolah for your service as a result. And last year we had uh, upwards of a hundred and twenty odd thousand dollars made in the room. This year I spoke with previous clients of ours that came last uh, earlier in the year, and now what I want for these people is I said to them, I, now that you've stepped up your game, I want four times the amount now. So I'm putting some pressure on them, right? Because I know pressure is what will produce a diamond. Diamonds are made under pressure. So I said, you bring your team, you get your team on the call, you map out three days, and this is what we do. We re-go over your marketing, we'll re-go and, and get all that in place and done and completed. There's some new stuff that I've got as well that we can implement to be able to produce a better result. Then we can go back over your whole sales process and remodel, rechange to new services, new products all this sort of stuff. And then on day three, when we all jump on the phone, you've got three of your team on the phone as well as you on the phone. And let's start producing more. Let's get more volume, right? So we know our cost per acquisition. Let's get more volume, more calls, right? So more people we can get on the phone, the better. Let's get more appointments booked in for that day on the Sunday. And let's get more pictures out in that day because we've got more people on the phone. And let's, as a result, get a lot more sales because not only have you already got the sales process, know what to say, how to say it, but then you're getting someone whispering in your ear how to close that's been doing it for 13 years. It's going to be so much more advantageous. But once again, it only comes with the work being done. All right, so that's that's the war room. That's that's what we, we do in the war room and that's how it works. That's why it's called the war room because we're going to war in your business, right? If you look at the war room back in ancient times, it was a place that people were invited to that had proven themselves in battle, okay? So people that prove, had proven themselves in battle that they were a really good warrior and that they could produce a result in war, which is to, number one, stay alive, and number two, be valuable on the battlefield so they'd produce that value there already. And they got invited into the war room and promoted and knighted and all this type of stuff, and as a result, they got invited into the war room where you work on the big arching strategy based on the experience that they've had. They got invited in to work on the big picture strategies in order to grow, take things to the next level, win the war, that type of stuff. And the war in this case is business, right? It's too many people are worrying. They're business warriors. They're not warriors, they're business warriors. They're worrying, where is the next lead going to come from? How can I get the next sale? How can I grow my business? They're worrying about things. How am I going to pay the business's expenses? How am I going to you know, grow the business? They're worrying about the minor BS things that they shouldn't be worrying about. Like everything's a system, it's predictable. And if you're worrying about all of this, you're a business worrier. And business worriers, they don't grow. They don't grow their business because they just consistently worry about things. However, in the war room, you turn into a business warrior like an actual warrior that goes to war every single day in business and wins in battle. I mean, sometimes things don't go your way, understand. Sometimes things don't go your way. But the only way you can become a warrior is by implementing, doing things, following systems, right? 
in battle, people had, back in ancient times and all this sort of stuff, they've got full battle plans that they follow. And that's our battle plan marketing method, by the way. It's a full battle plan that they've got around how they're going to attack the enemy, right? And how they're going to acquire the win. The win is the cost per acquisition of a client, right? So it's about what's the strategy that we're going to do. We implement the strategy, we go to war, boom, we're away, right? And we just do it every single day and we systematically grow. That's what it's all about, right? So you implement the battle plan marketing method, the battle plan sales method in the war room, which you get invited to. The only way you can invite is by typing war room into the comments and we will give you some information on that and work out how it's gonna be a right fit for you. Okay, so just hit us up in the comments just below and let us know if you would like some information about that, we will reach out to you personally as well. Number one is we wanna make sure that obviously it's gonna be a right fit for you because uh, I've got a goal where I would like to be able to do a hundred, uh, half a million in sales in the room. I wanna get us to a million in the room uh, but I just got to get more people in the room, right? That's that's all it is, right? So if you would like to come, just type war room into the comments and uh, we'll get you some information on what that's going to look like and assess the suitability for you, okay? So uh, that's going to be an exciting thing. That's on the 5th, 6th and 7th of June. I, I love these events. It's great. It's virtual so you can join in anywhere in the world. You used to only be able to come to Perth for it. Now you can do it online. Yay! The days have changed. So, uh, guys, I want to leave you with this following comment uh, after I see if there's any other questions that have come in. So I've just talked for a little bit in hope that some of you may ask a few more questions. So let's get some questions answered if you guys have any. Uh, so you don't misread question. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let me just see if I've got some other questions I'm reading now. Questions, lager. Okay, you're just messaging me. Okay. Serena's messaging me privately and I thought she was sending me some questions that I may have missed, but it wasn't a question that I've missed. See, she's always checking up on me and making sure that I'm providing the most value to you guys as possible and I'm not missing any comments. So shout out to Serena for being absolutely amazing. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna shut this one off for today, guys. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys one final thing. There is a question you have missed. Well, what is the question I've missed? Where is the question? Where is the question? Who is, who is, who's the person that's asked the question? Trillion Dollar Coach. Uh, Mikhail, knowing the name, seeing, being able to convey. Uh, I've answered Mikhail's question already. Uh, how much research do you put into a business before cold calling them? Uh, I do absolutely. So that's one that I have missed. Sorry, Mikhail. So how much research do I do before making a cold call to a business? I actually don't have any research. The reason being is because why Why would I spend all the time researching if I, if I get on the phone and they're not even interested anyway, right? I got to get some interest before... I, I even spend an hour researching someone or half an hour researching someone, right? You gotta understand these metrics, right? If there's not a cost per acquisition, there's a cost in time spent, right? Time is just as valuable as money and time is actually more valuable than money, right? So uh, time, cold calling, is usually done within office hours, right? the time can be alleviated by having paid marketing in place to prospect 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as opposed to just cold calling and business hours. So time is actually more valuable than money, right? So there's a time spent cold calling. I'm not gonna spend an hour researching somebody if they are not even interested in our product. And if someone says they're not interested, there's still an interest there, and I'll follow them up at a later date. However, I want someone that's interested now to have a conversation around the product. So 
I've done this, I've done uh, videos already on cold calling and things like that, and it works as simple as this. You guys are gonna have a business asset that you give away for free in some way, shape, or form. The way it goes is like this. Hey John, uh, my name's Jared. I promised one, my team member, or promised the business owner here, whoever that is, I promised Mikhail that I would give you a call today to send you across this marketing blueprint that I've got. What's the best number to send it to? Or what's the best email to send it to? And the person will say, nine times out of 10, this is my email. Oh, who, where are you calling from again? Oh, I just promised Mikhail, who's here at my business, that I would give you a quick call today to send you across this marketing blueprint I've got to show you how to generate 37 to 59 new leads for your business in 28 days or less. What's the best email for me to send this to? And then you ask it a second time and someone will give you, very large percentages of the time, a email address, which is then a mini sale and a mini commitment for your business. Then from there, I'll go, call John, I'll send that through to you straight away. Uh, is it okay if I give you a call Tuesday next week to see how it went for you? Uh, yeah, that's fine, no worries, mate. Fantastic. Uh, have you, uh, just before you go as well, have you, have you thought about the opportunity of getting more leads via Facebook or Instagram for your business? Yeah, yeah, I have thought about it. Or no, I haven't thought about it. And you just, you can continue a conversation from there uh, based on someone's interest level. So you've always got to get someone's interest before doing research. So your answer, answer the question straight blunt to the point, zero research until I have someone interested. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that was the only question that I, uh, I've missed, but let me, let me have a quick look to see if there was any other questions because I'm gonna leave you guys with a final opening quest, uh, things to think about for today on this live stream, okay? Final things to understand. Uh, weren't friended, okay, my account has been something wrong with it. Okay, that's not a question. Uh, Facebook Live, Instagram Live. Does Facebook Live or Instagram Live get people involved? And what is IGTV? Well, Instagram TV is IGTV, okay? And that's done by a normal post on Instagram. And it's a video, hence the name TV. So in simplest terms, this is a cool thing you can do now. You can do a live stream on Instagram, which will reach more people, and you'll get more people on the live stream. After you finish the live stream, it says, do you wanna share it to Instagram TV? You can say yes, post it, put your hashtags, and you can reach more people with the same video. So Instagram TV and Instagram Live working in unison now the best decision I believe Instagram's made. So that's what I'd be doing. I'd be doing a live stream and then I'd be posting it as a video on Instagram TV. So it's there as an asset for the business and it's there for people to view anytime they want. On Instagram before, it was only available for 24 hours, which I thought was silly. But I'm glad they've changed that now. So that's a new thing that's only just opened up over the last week and a bit probably last couple of weeks. It's definitely only just opened up this month. Can't give you the exact time frame, but I've noticed that just recently this month, okay? Um, so best thing, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, I'd be doing them in unison, so you reach more people. Uh, I always do Instagram and Facebook Live at the same time, because I'll capture different people. And I don't care if you know one more person views it or two more people view it or whatever, it's two more or one more pe person that I didn't have, right? That it's reached. So that's the whole idea around it. A lot of people go, I've only had this much or I've only done this. But if you hadn't have done it, you wouldn't have had it. Something is better than nothing and that's why actions overcome anything. I see a lot of people saying that, you know, uh, if you're only getting a small amount of viewers or if you're, you know, uh, you, you don't have a big influence at the moment, stay away from this and focus on something else instead, which is okay, right, from, you know, uh, a certain, to a certain point, a certain degree. However, you still want to be using both anyway because, I mean, if you're using both anyway, you're getting in front of more people, therefore you're getting more results, right? 
It's all about getting attention, getting in front of more people. That's what you want to do every single day, getting in front of more people in your business so you have more opportunities and you can do more of the five, or actually six steps that I spoke to you about today. So I'm going to wind all this up. If I have missed any other questions, I do apologize. Post them on the next video or tag me in the comments of this video so I can get that answered for you because I've got to jump on another call now. Uh, remember guys, if you do not fight for your own freedom, nobody else will. So every single day, you must get out there, you must be taking action and making it happen and implementing these exact six things that I've spoken to you guys about today. Uh, if you want to profit from social media, if you don't want to profit from social media, don't worry about it. If you want to profit from social media, get out there, take action, make it happen, implement this stuff, and I'll see you guys on the next video tomorrow, 12 o'clock, Perth, Western Australia time on Saturday. Speak to you soon.